Okay, so to get started with the Azure Sphere GenX um, our community project, head to GitHub, Gloveboxes slash Azure Sphere GenX. Uh, clone, that, um, clone that repo down onto your desktop, and I'm going to give you a quick, a, view, a quick overview of how it works. So in Visual Studio Code, I have loaded up a file called appmodel.json. And the app model describes the kind of the features that you want to put into your application. And of course, you can go through and you can go and change this to match your requirements for how you want the application to behave. Now, behind the scenes, I've also started up a Python application called generator.py. And what that's doing, it's watching for updates to the app model. Switching across to Visual Studio, you'll see that I've got um, main.c open. And really, there's nothing implemented here. You can see there's init peripherals, closed peripherals, and there goes the main entry point for the application. And you can see the application ends at uh, line 98. So going back to the model, um, you'll see that there are effectively bindings. And these bindings really map to uh, the bindings that sit on the Azure Sphere DevX library. So in this case here, I want to set a device twin. And I'm going to set that to true. Save that away. Switch over to Visual Studio. And you'll see what's happened now is a function has been generated for me called set desired temperature and there goes the handler and you'll also notice that there is a signature for this function and this func this signature includes the id which is the um, same as a function name as well as a md5 hash of the code that lives inside this generated function and you can see there goes the end of it now the whole idea behind this is that if i start implementing my code so in this case here i'll go and press say uh, press uh, carriage return I'll save that code, switch across to the generator, save that again, switch across to the uh, generated code. You'll notice that now that the code is now considered to be your code, uh, you'll see that signature has been removed because the hashes didn't mash, match. Uh, it now has assumed that you want to keep that code. Now, as part of this generation process, I also generate this GX declarations file. And if you looked at, if you watched the Azure Sphere DevX session, you will appreciate um, the kind of the concepts of a really strong pattern around bindings. Uh, so you'll see that there goes the uh, the device twin binding, and you can see it was called set uh, desired temperature. You remember there was this uh, array of device twin bindings. Pass that by reference, and that gets called. And in here somewhere is the handler, and there goes the implementation of the handler. And it's up to you to go and put the code in for your application. So as I'm carrying on, I can come back to the generator and say, well, look, I want uh, another device twin. Uh, in this case here, and of course, I can go and change the name of this, by the way. Um, but this is this will do for the demo. So I've saved that away. So the generator will run, switch across to um, main.c. And you can see that now I've got um, the set desired CO2 alert levels. And switching that back through here, the same principle you saw in the de previous demo around DevX. We had that being able to device a direct method, being able to control a light and turn it on and off. We'll go and set this direct method for light on to true. And we'll go and set that to be true as well. Switch across to main.c. And you will see that there goes the direct method that's been implemented. So you can see it's a direct method binding. Um, there's an example here about how to deal with all the JSON deserialization stuff that's really quite painful to deal with. Um, it's, it's all in there. And then there's a kind of a suggested place for you to go and implement your logic. Um, and the same principle applies here for, for light off. Again, it's the same template. Um, we'll switch across to the, um, the app model again. And we'll go down to an area which are called custom bindings. Now, custom bindings, I kind of consider them to be recipes, and I will kind of show a bit more about why that is in a moment. Um, so I've put in here things that I feel that really Azure Sphere applications should have as a basic um, requirement. So deferred update is a really useful thing to have in your application. Deferred update is the idea of being able to say, look, when an update comes through, either an OS update or your application update, you might say, well, actually, now is not a good time to update the application. It's midday. I've got lots of people using the application. I'd prefer to do this at 2 in the morning. Um, so this is the kind of the idea how deferred updates work. So we'll go and set that to true and switch across to the uh, main.c. 
And you'll see what it's implemented, what it's added in, is two functions. One's called deferred update calculate, and the other one's called uh, notification. And you'll see that these recipes can be quite complex, and you have the ability to go and really customize these for your requirements as well, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, just kind of while we're here, the way that deferred update calculate works is that you have the ability to say kind of some algorithm. It might be timing based, for example. You might say, look, I don't want this application to update until one in the morning. In which case you might say, hey, look, it's midday now. I might go and calculate the, the number of minutes between now and 1 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. And I would say to the deferred update uh, um, system, hey, uh, defer this update for X number of minutes. Or it might be, hey, look, nobody's used this application for, for half an hour. I'm going to risk it and I'm going to update the application. Um, but it's really up to you. And then all you've got to do is set the requested minutes uh, back uh, on that callback for you to tell the system, say, hey, look, defer for X number of minutes. If you set it to zero, then the deferred update will, will um, the update will happen then. Uh, deferred of, of zero minutes. Um, and you can see in here, just as a bit of a pattern, I've added a uh, device twin and the device twin would just report back a uh, when the when the update happened. Sorry, what the update uh, deferral was. Um, the same thing here is for uh, notifications. Um, quite a useful mechanism just to be able to say, um, I'm using it here for device twin update, just to notify and write back a device twin to say, hey, look, there was a request to do a deferred update and this was the status of it. Um, so hopefully you're getting the idea behind it of the generator. So you can be having your code uh, there. You've got these signatures. So remember, you've got these signatures there. As soon as you start uh, implementing your logic, um, uh, the the update, you'll see that the um, uh, though that those tags get removed. It is now considered to be your code. Uh, yeah. So now we're back in the uh, Visual Studio Code system. As I mentioned, that these things are all templatable, and there are some standard templates of which I think are a reasonable guess at the types of things that you might want to go and do. Um, and again, all customizable for your requirements, or for that matter, you might want to contribute back into the list of templates. Uh, and these templates here, you can go and define, you can go and declare bindings. So this template here is going to declare a device uh, twin binding set. Um, we've got, what else have we got in here? We've got a handler for device twins. Uh, we've got uh, a binding template. We've got GPIO input templates. We've got various things in here. So the whole thing here is template driven. Now we also have these idea of, of recipes, which I mentioned before. So we've got custom bindings and we've got deferred, uh, in this case here, I'm gonna open up the deferred update. And you'll see that the way this works is that the file name is kind of metadata in its own right. So in this case here, I've got the mouse, in which case this one here is called deferred update request dot device twin binding. So this is going to define a twin binding and it's going to define a type of string. Um, I've got another one here, which is a handler uh, for this deferred notification. Um, I've got another one here. I wanted a, a device twin binding for updating the notifi update notification, deferred notification. Um, I've got a deferred update calculate. So that was that function that I showed you before about how to go and calculate the number of minutes for a deferral. Um, so the key thing I want to get across this is that the whole system is templatable and you have these ideas of bindings. And it's all very much built on the concept of bindings from the Azure Sphere DevX library. So hopefully that kind of gives you a bit of an idea of the project. Um, it's still work in progress. Absolutely love contributions to it. Um, the folk at Avnet are contributing into it now, which is just awesome and adding in some specific things that they would like to see. Um, obviously, um, other contributions, super welcome. So give it a go and be sure to give me some feedback. Or if you find any issues, uh, report issues up on the GitHub or feel free to do any pull requests as well. Thank you very much.